and welcome to another episode of Seeds of Wisdom brought to you by From a Loving Place with author Rachel Wolf. I'm Rachel Wolf, and I am so excited today to have with me the awe inspiring author, Alan Klein. He I was connected to him before he even wrote his latest book, The Awe Factor, and I knew there was something special about what he had to offer the world, whether it was because of his energy and that clown nose I saw for the first time when I met him. Uh, see, <laughs> that reminded me of Patch Adams or the fact that he wrote a book that helped one of my best friends get through her darkest times embracing grief uh, after her her son was murdered. So I already knew he was something special. So I want him to introduce himself so we can talk about how he his seed is living an awesome life. So with that, thank you for being here. Introduce yourself, Alan. Well, Rachel, thank you for that introduction. Um, you know, you're talking about my books helping like your friend. And I realize, you know, why do I write books? You've written a book or two yourself, right? Yep. And it's not an easy process, right? It doesn't just flow some days. Um, it takes a lot of work, a lot of writing and then editing and going over and editing and editing and finding the stories. And it's not easy. And so people ask me, you know, why do you write a book? And you just gave me my number one reason is if I could help one person with that book, I've done my job well. Yeah. And so, uh, and the other reason, uh, thing people ask me is why do I keep writing books? <laughs> you know, <laughs> in fact, I just said the off factor would be my last book. <laughs> and hmm. <laughs> I've been, I mean, I've been writing stories, but I didn't think it would become a book. And then, I just got an offer from a publisher that I really respect looking for more books in that area, which I did a TED talk on the power of intention. And I thought a book about, I know it's been written about, but not from my kind of angle. And that would be a perfect book for this publisher. And so here I am. <laughs> at least at least doing the proposal and we see if they if they buy it then of course I have to write another book <laughs> <laughs> well it just you just have so much to offer I'm just so glad that you keep writing and you keep going with what comes to you too because like you said even though power of intention's been written about you know we connect to specific people's voices no matter how many times it's written and you know mm -hmm. people who connect with you connect with you and because with your books you connect to so many people it's not just your voice that you speak through in your books either right that I noticed you do a lot of quotes from people you research you look into things so it's not just like with the awe factor it's not just your opinion of awe <laughs> No, no, I want I wanted to show uh, readers how awe can be teeny little things and can be really big things. So I wanted those stories uh, about other people, how, what awe was for them so that readers can get a sense of I didn't think this is an awe moment. And yet there it was. You know, when I was writing my first book, The Healing Power of Humor, I had a, I had one editor. She was great. She left the company. I got another editor, which was not so great because every time I would submit something, he wanted a story to go with it. More stories, more stories, more stories. And I realized the power of a story because I can have an idea. I can tell you what I think about it. But unless I have a story to go with it, it doesn't make it as real as hearing how other people have used or how that has impacted their life. And so I'm a big one for finding stories and other people's voices uh, in my book to to illustrate what I'm saying. Yes, it, it was it 
it makes it so easy to connect because if you don't connect in one place, you might really connect in another. And, you know, th through my experience, I've discovered that it's how we perceive something is how we're going to take it in. So it's not specifically the words because certain words, they could be great words. And you even mentioned this, like the word awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Some people take that word and create this negative spin around it but that's in their space that's in their head that's not it doesn't mean that everybody who expresses awesome sees it as a diminished word you know it, it's not it's not the same for all people and i right and i love that you take on both so that people can go oh if i do believe this then this is the way to look at it if i do believe this this is the way to look at it right right so it makes yeah, it easier yeah, for people yeah, i think yeah so um you know the awe book came out of um well particularly one friend who said she always says alan you live a charmed life <laughs> and so i start questioning that like what what does that mean why does she think i live a charmed life and i think i think you know, when I start examining it, I realize that maybe I live a charmed life because I see more of the positive in the world than the negative. And the reason I may see the positive and the and the lightness in the world rather than the heaviness is because of my childlike view of the world. You know, you probably know or don't know, I used to be the designer for the Captain Kangaroo show. I love that. Uh, and now some people, you know, a little older, not that I'm saying you're old, but <laughs> younger people don't know who that is. But basically, he was on t t children's show. I don't know. I was designing it when it was 25 years old. So I'm sure it went to 30 or even more years on, on television. Because it was and still on when I was a kid. Yeah. 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 Long time. So. <laughs> I had to think when I was a designer, I had to think like a child because if um, Bunny Rabbit uh, tricked Mr. Green Jeans into making an invention that when he pressed the button, carrots would pop out, that's what Bunny Rabbit loved was carrots. Um, I was the one who had to make the machine, right? I was the designer. so. I would think, what would a child do? Well, a child might get a cardboard box and get a strainer from the kitchen and attach it or something from their dad's office, you know, and paste it on or mom's button box and put, but so I had to think like that. And I realized, and I also was reading a lot of children's books for 10 years. I did that show. And when I needed inspiration, I would go read a children's book. <laughs> So I had to think like a child. And I think that continued um, into my, the rest of my life. Well, and, you know, childlike thinking is wonder. You know, it's it keeps that curiosity alive. And, that, and it's not that curiosity of the doom and gloom curiosity. <laughs> no. It's the it's, awe it's, curiosity. It's amazement. Yeah. yeah. One of my acronyms, and unfortunately, I came up with this after the book was published. I wish it was in the book, is AWE. A-W-E stands for a wow experience. I love that. A wow that. experience. And that's what kids are have every tons of times a day. They're getting a wow experience on something that we don't even pay attention to. So I, I live my life like that. And I think it's why my friend thinks I live a charmed life, but I see a penny on the street. Deborah, I'm always finding money, first of all. <laughs> but um, I see a penny on the street and I get a mini little wow experience. It, yes. It's and yeah, and that's what's so remarkable is when we can take the simplest, it's it's seeing a rock, it's seeing the penny, it's seeing just something so simple. Or for me, this is why I do this. It's the conversations because I get the chills and the awe factor in just hearing that wisdom, 
you know, that comes through and you know, it's like, it touches you and resonates with you in this, this, this amazing way. Yeah. It, and you know, now like a child, I've been, people start laughing at me, but now they're sending me their own, what they find. I look for faces in odd places. So I've I might seen that on your post. Yeah. I love this that. week I cut a pineapple <laughs> and part of it was a little overripe. And there was this big smiling face. You know, I had to take a picture. I had to post it on Facebook. And again, isn't that like childlike thinking, like just seeing these smiling faces in stuff that you wouldn't associate seeing that. So again, it's like opening part is intention that I, I'm looking for this. Um, part, it brings me amusement. It brings me joy. It, it gives me that mini awe and wow experience. All of it helps me, I don't know, enjoy life more. And, you know, I love in your book, because you talk about the three steps um, when it's, you know, you're setting your antenna to awe and you have these three steps. And one of them is setting the intention, committing, and then making the choice. And I think, you know, when people who have a lot of past trauma, but yet people think they live a charmed life or have no clue of the drama that they've gone through or traumatic events, part of that is the choice of that person your choice to live in the curiosity, your choice to find those little things that brighten your day, because whatever we focus on, we make bigger. So exactly. Yeah. And, you know, just to uh, illustrate that, um, you may know my wife died when she was 34. And she had a rare liver disease that we knew she had at 31. So we lived with that for three years. And after she died, we always laughed at together a lot <laughs> and after she died I kept thinking and we had a 10 year old daughter my daughter Sarah um, you know how would she want me to bring up my daughter T to you know cry all the time and be sad at the time yes we experienced grief but she would also want us to be joyful and happy and laugh a lot together which my daughter and I <laughs> have done all these years we we walk down the street and we go over sometimes to a parking meter and make believe it's a microphone and start singing into our microphone I mean we do silly things and laugh a lot together and I in a way it's like honoring her honoring Sarah's mother and, and my wife um so it's it's yes it was a sad occasion but again, choice, how are we going to look at that? And so we've kind of turned it around and I've honored her in my books, you know, the healing power of humor was written uh, because of she taught me how to lighten up even through the tears. Um, so yeah, it's not that my charmed life is not without, in Yiddish it's called surus, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, my life is not without service and how you know that wasn't the only thing a lot of a lot of things have happened but i also realized that um we're here to enjoy ourselves and and uh, i don't i don't know when i'm getting up in years i don't know when my final day will be so you know how do i want to live till that day and how do i want what do i want to leave what's behind what's my legacy and I would like to people to think of me as being a joyful, happy person that is um, help them be a little more joyful and happy too. Which I love that you call yourself a joyologist, right? Actually, it's a jolly jollyologist, jollyologist, <laughs> jollyologist. <laughs> but I I don't care what you call me; it's fine. <laughs> yes, I I read it. And obviously it stuck differently in my head, but <laughs> no, it's, it's a hard one. People, yeah. people say, well, why didn't you call yourself a, um, jolly, no, I get jolly ologist and instead of jolly And I said, well, think of proctologist. 
and you'll get jolly. I don't know you get so jolly, but jolly tologist. Maybe I should not have had the tea. I don't know. Well, you know, it brings you delight to, you know, to think about it. And that's what matters is it's how we connect to it. So, yeah, because it and, makes and it brings delight to other people. It's a great because um, it's on my business card when I was traveling a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, what is a jolly tologist? And suddenly it's an icebreaker and 15 minutes goes by and I'm still talking to that person. Mm -hmm. So it was a great icebreaker, too. So one of the things I love about your book, it, this being the awe factor, so it's, you talk about awe from many different perspectives, many different quotes, and then you just, there's tons of stories. There's lots and lots of stories. And what I love about this is for me, it reminds me of all of mine. Mm. You know, it, it reminds me of all the times I, I've connected to awe, that I've seen awe, that maybe, oh, wait, I'm neglecting this area of awe, you know, and it really was great that way, because, you know, it for me, when I was really finding myself um, after I had felt like I totally lost myself in like all the titles of things. I went on a six week road trip with my two little kids <laughs> and oh. we went up into the mountains and we did waterfalls and all of that. And it reconnected me with awe so that I started, like you said, you put your antenna out and you committed. So I started seeing it everywhere and it really yeah. helped me out of some of the darkest times of my life connecting to that and it helped me connect to that my my true nature and you know we we have something very much in common after my wife died i said to my daughter she was 10 at the time i said we need an adventure and we went on a uh, trip to alaska and we took seaplanes and we took uh, little boats uh, overnighting by the calving glaciers and we walked on a glacier and uh we took a white water river trip and we went on the ferry so we went on the train into canada and you know we still talk about that trip we talk about the puffins which my daughter loved and still loves seeing the puffins so nature we didn't i didn't realize that the awe at the time what was healing us was the awe Yes. Um, and connecting with her, you know, mm -hmm. so it was, I don't know what told me to do that. It was some inner, I always listened to my inner being and it said, you need an adventure, go on the trip, get away from all of this. And it connected my daughter and I and gave us this incredible experience that, you know, is a lifetime memory um, that we, as I say, we still Remember when, you know, we were supposed to go down the white water and the boat had turned over the day before and we were the first ones down and <laughs> we were, you know, it was like life threatening. They had a helicopter people out of the ice water and but we were, they can't cancel on us. We're going, we're going, you know, it's like we want to, maybe we were stupid. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's like you you create with a trip, you know, you get out of your element and you create something new. And it's, there's always adventure. There's always something that happens that changes your thinking, perhaps. Now, for, for you, did it change? Like, I know for me, after doing that experience, it was much easier for me to spot uh, in the smaller places once I experienced that awe in the more extreme, I started spotting the awe, that feeling of awe in, in the little things more. Did that happen for you? You know, there probably was, but as many people, you don't think that, oh, this is awe until you look back. Yeah. So um, it probably was. And one of the things I did start realizing and i think maybe that trip did help is to look at um all that i still had all that was still around me rather than my loss 
I mean, the loss was there, but I put in the background for a little bit and focused on, yes, I still had a wonderful daughter. I had a wonderful living situation. I had a business that was thriving. I had really good friends. I had food on the table. You know, I just start noticing more of what I had rather than focusing on what I lost. And so that helped me get through my my grief too. And I guess it was what you're saying, noticing the little things too in my life. Uh, yeah. So with that, we have to wrap it up, but I just want to let people know <laughs> that, you know, if you truly want to open the door to awe, and he even has a part of this in the book, it, read the book, go to the book, because honestly, reading the stories, reading about <laughs> it really does make it easier to remember when you've seen awe in your life. And by when we can pull on that, then we can have more of it. And then we put our antennas out for it. So I am so grateful to have you here. Oh, Thank wow. you so much. Thank you. You are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way about you. And I truly, when I feel awe, it's awe. So <laughs> thank you so much. And if you're watching this, it's because you're meant to be here too. So take what you need and, and continue on with your day. Have a wonderful day. Make sure to follow the links that accompany this episode. You will learn a lot more about today's guest and see what they have going on now. You will also get all the links to follow them on their journeys if this seed resonates with you. If you like what you heard, remember to like, follow, and subscribe to FromALovingPlace.com and all its platforms. Remember to come back next week for another Seed of Wisdom.